Hello everybody, Banggood sent me this. Yeah, I specifically sent them white in caps because I knew this might happen, but it still happened. So this Anbernic RG351P is actually $90. It's not exactly the cheapest thing out there, but it's also not sky high in price either. I'd review this, except that there's a channel called Retro Game Corps that does amazing reviews. As disappointed as I am that this thing is plastic, it surprisingly looks really good. It feels extremely solid, like wow. It feels full. Nbenic 351P can emulate all the way from NES to PSP games, which is freaking amazing. I've never thought that I would ever see a handheld that can emulate PSP games. The joysticks are amazing. It's similar to what you would find on a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con. The D-pad definitely does feel a lot more solid than the face buttons. These triggers, whoa, they're really, really clicky. <laughs> there are two speakers on the bottom, although this device is mono, if I'm not wrong. Overall, I am extremely satisfied and impressed with this handheld. It feels way more premium than I was. I used to be a Game Boy collector back in the day, and if it weren't for running games, I'd be a retro gamer. <laughs> right now, I have 351 ELEC running on the system. This system is not stock, it is modded. The screen is an IPS panel, and the screen can get ridiculously bright, like really, really bright. Uh, the stock phone model was okay, I guess. It didn't really emulate PSP games very well, so I really highly recommend that if you were to get this, please flash it with 351 ELEC. So yeah, today we're going to push this thing through a couple of tests. Let's see how it does with a bunch of running games. Oh right, speaking of PC98, I actually did try run Toho on this. But whenever I tried to run Toho, this will happen. Yeah, and then the game kind of just stops there. I mean, I don't really know what to do. So if you guys have any idea what to do, please let me know because I want to see how well Toho can run on this. Let's try the easiest system to emulate, which would be the NES. So we're going to try playing Hyper Beats, which is an NES rhythm game that's not made during NES era. This is made pretty recently, actually. <laughs> oh... This is tough. This is tough. <laughs> it works perfectly well. Exactly what I expected, honestly. Alright, so let's go to the Game Boy Color games. Beatmania Game Boy. Back in my Game Boy collecting days, I actually did pick up a copy of Beatmania Game Boy. I thought it was really cute, you know, actually owning like something related to the rhythm games while I was collecting. <laughs> yeah, I could show you how it looks like on an actual Game Boy Color, except that I don't think we have time for that on the video today. It's really cute. Speaking of retro dumps and ROMs, downloading ROMs might not be the most legal thing on Earth. And also, this thing on default, it has all the BIOS files for all the game systems inside here, which is not the most legal thing on earth. And he had like hundreds of games already preloaded into here, which is kind of crazy. All right, let's start. By the way, being a Game Boy is actually ridiculously difficult. <laughs> I'll show you. I believe the gauge this is using is like the original hard gauge where when once your health goes down, it will never come back up. All right, so I could never get over this stage, no matter how much I tried back then and today. <laughs> God, that's difficult. That's difficult. <laughs> and that's it for Beatmania. And I assume that the rest should run perfectly fine as well. Which means that Poppin, Game Boy, and Dance Dance Revolution Game Boy should run perfectly fine as well. Let's move on. Game Boy Advance. I don't have any Rune games here, but I do have a really good one. And of course, that will be the one and only and extremely legendary American Idol. Be back to bother me. Go on now, go. Walk out the door. Just turn around now. Cause you're not welcome anymore. God, I love this game so much. Now let's move to the actually interesting ones. PlayStation. Let's play the world's first rhythm game, Parappa the Rapper. For some reason, I can't seem to get past the first stage. I heard that Parappa is not the most optimized game ever. That's why the timing windows can seem everywhere. Even if it seems like you're hitting it correctly, you just aren't. Don't really know what's happening. I think it's just Parappa itself that the inputs are just kinda weird. Can I try Beat Mania for PlayStation? Beat Mania, Whoa, trigger is that? Oh, 
Yeah, the timings are fine on this. So I think it's just Parappa being not optimized. I also have VIP Ribbon here, which is... It should be the world's second ever running game, but I have no idea what's going on in that game, so I'm not gonna play it. Let's try the DS games first. For some reason, I tried fiddling around on settings because I wanted to change some of the keybinds. And as you can see here, the Jurassic menu is tiny. I can barely read what's going on. Oh wait, now it's working. Yeah, so pressing these buttons up here changes the screen so you can see which screen you're using. It's hard to see, but you can see this tiny stylus there. That's your touch. <laughs> so yeah, if you try changing the analog stick that controls the stylus to the other joystick, things happen, so I don't really recommend changing the settings and you'll be playing like this. It's really uncomfortable. And half of the time, I can't even see where my stylus is. This is just hard to see. All the weird controls aside, it emulates DS just fine. Well, at least O and done. I don't recommend you play DS games with this thing. It's just not a good experience. <laughs> Alright, and now for the best for last, PSP. And I'm honestly surprised. <laughs> it actually runs pretty well at a stable 30 frames per second. Having a low frame rate is one thing, but having a stable frame rate is honestly what matters a lot more. Although because of the low frame rate, I noticed that the game's not as smooth as it's supposed to be, but it runs fine. And I'd say this is great if you're going to play the game casually, honestly. Ooh, man, I can't read those patterns. Yeah, another thing. Because the screen is so small, it's kind of hard to see what's happening on the screen. And also because of the buttons. Like, these buttons are fine. These buttons are really stiff. Way too stiff for running games like these. Ah, when Project University had the folk notes. Honestly, I'm impressed by the performance. Like, this is obviously not something I would daily drive. You're much better off modding a PS Vita and then running a PSP emulator on the PS Vita. But when I get retro game handhelds like these, I'm getting it for the experience of purely retro gaming like GBA and stuff around there, not PSP. And the performance on Project Diva is actually really amazing, at least to me, because, well, GTA runs like this. It's not good. <laughs> Yeah, you can see like frame stutters and drops every here and there, which would really impact you if you're playing an action game like this. Or a rhythm game, but for Pretty Diva, it's a constant stable all the time. I noticed for 3D games, it usually always hovers around 30. And here's another game we should try that's 3D. This is Guitar Man. I've never played it before, but I wanted to showcase this because this is also another 3D game that runs at stable 30 frames per second. Dang, that voice really doesn't sound like it should be in a kid's game. Well, Guitar Root Man is actually pretty good because like the game UI in general is just really big so it doesn't look that bad on the small screen. The joysticks feel really good on this. And yeah, that's it for Guitar Man. Works perfectly fine. Taiko no Tatsujin Portable. This is not a 3D game. So this is a PSP game that's entirely 2D and it runs at a stable 60 frames per second. You can see the difference in just the smoothness. This is 10 stars? I thought it was 9. Also, I noticed the direction of buttons are just really terrible on this. I mean, they're just really stiff for Taiko. The difference in feel between the D-pad and the, the normal buttons is just jarring. Fingers are really tired. Whoa. Also, I met this to the analog sticks, and um, I noticed that in game it makes a yo sound. I'm not sure why. It is really fun to casually play Taiko with. Another game that also runs at 60 would be Poppin. Although, let's try DJ Max Portable. Oh man, the, the song select is lagging. The game actually looks really small on the screen. Luckily, the notes are really big, so you can kind of see what's happening. So, on the song select, it doesn't run at the perfect 60. But in the game itself, it runs 60. That was a lot of fun. Alright, so DJ Max Portable works perfectly fine. 
Honestly, this is a really nice retro piece of thing that I have. I don't really use it to play running games. I don't expect most people would because, I mean, honestly, you are very much better off getting a PS Vita, modding it, and it'll be the perfect rhythm game handheld device because, well, the screen is much bigger, fits PSP games much better, and, well, you wouldn't have so much issues emulating, well, PSP games, yeah? The screen and the buttons just really hold this thing back. Except it's still really cool to have a dedicated device for retro gaming. I love retro games. So fun. And yeah, that's it for the NBNIC RG 351P. If you're interested in it, I left the link in the description. Check out Banggood's, their website that sells a lot of things, actually. You get stuff for cheap there. You can get things from custom keyboard parts to electronic parts to straight up things like these. And I really highly recommend you guys go check out this channel called Retro Game Corps for more info about Embernic and how to set up the device and everything else. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you guys next time.